thank you for joining us once again for Women on a Hustle. This time we have a fantastic interview with one of my favorite people, Terrence Jackson. He is the curator of U-Space Gallery. Don't make me say that word again. Curator. U-Space Gallery. He's going to give us a tour of his wonderful, wonderful gallery. And then you're going to see interviews with the artists, a couple of the artists that are featured at his gallery. And last but not least, we have a wonderful film clip by our very own beautiful, talented Tracy Cruz. And this is called Omissions. You know, as in what she takes out of all the things that I put in when she edits. Omissions. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy Women on a Hustle, Terrence Jackson's U Space Gallery, and a film clip by our very own Tracy Cruz. Thank you. Hi, welcome to Women on a Hustle. I'm Kelly, also known as Cheesecake Kel, and today we're at U Space Gallery with the owner of U Space Gallery, Terrence Jackson. Hi, Terrence. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Kelly? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, tell us about about you, your gallery. This is a wonderful, wonderful shop, and the art is wonderful. It's a lot of um, mixed media, isn't it? It is. Um, the idea for the gallery actually took place when I was seven years old, of all things. Um, it was kind of born out of um, my frustration one day of having to constantly pull together different artists in different mediums doing different things um, from these books and my mother actually was um, entering the room and so I looked at her one day and I said these people are going to be in the same book one day and that really was the beginning of the concept of having a gallery that didn't focus on one particular style or genre but really focused on the power of people creating something that they just felt compelled to do. Okay. Now tell me, the prices here are, this, the art is affordable. Yes. And I know that that's a passion of yours. You wanted to give art back to the people. Is that um, it is. I mean, as an, uh, as an artist myself, uh, one of the things I just found is it was very important um, to share the gift that you have and that as, as artists we all have a gift. Everyone has a gift, um, not just in art. But I think what happens a lot of times is in the process of recognizing the, the talent that each person feels God gave them, um, they somehow get caught up into the concepts of the world and before you know it they're creating things but the works that they're creating it's not really accessible to the market that actually is being represented in what they do and so for me it's really important to get artists to understand that um, you don't value a person by the amount of money they make but the important thing is to actually find people who actually recognize what you do, who celebrate what you do, because those are the people that um, when the times are lean, when things are hard, they really will keep you afloat because they will have a passion just like you have the passion for what you do. Um, and I think in this day and age, sometimes it's very difficult to, to just have the faith in what your gift is. And I think that's the other, the other important thing in, in the pricing is believing not only that um, it is a gift from God and that if it is a gift from God we all have a responsibility to share that gift with whoever because it's not our role to dictate who God gave us the message for and that's really what I call the gift I have and what I call other artists um, is I tell them they have a message to deliver and it's not for us as humans to want to open the envelope and see what's inside but actually to just deliver the message and let someone receive whatever that blessing is for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're really deep. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. And one of the things that I really truly appreciate about you and this gallery is that it's right in the heart of Atlanta. It's uh, all kinds of people. It's accessible. And uh, I noticed that with the homeless people, they love you. They come up to you, you help them, you tell them how it is. And sometimes you help them just by not helping them. 
You know, you mm -hmm. uh, you keep it keep it real, and they kind of, in a way, they look out for you. Yeah. Um, when I was trying to find a location for the gallery, I mean, one of the things that was very important is. Um, I think just as a person gets more comfortable with what they do or what they feel their role in um, is in the world, um, I think there's a certain alignment that you do so that you don't you don't wind up living a contradiction. Um, and I knew that I could have opened the gallery in Midtown, I could have opened it in Buckhead, um, in any affluent neighborhood, and it would be successful because I, I knew the people that I was working with. But what was more important for me is actually bringing the art to a to a environment or an environment that I felt like everyone had free access to it. Um, and I also felt like the people in the neighborhood where I chose to bring the gallery were just as worthy as the person living in a million dollar home. Um, and one of the things I'm constantly preaching is I always try to see myself in every single person I meet um, because those are the things that illuminate not only what I do, but they actually um, work as markers for me to just understand my own existence in the world and my own existence um, with other people in the world. Um, and because I, be I believe that art is not something that is for an elite market, that it is, again, a gift from God, um, I think we have a responsibility to make sure that when we, we say that, when we say this is a gift and it's coming from something higher than us, um, that we practice the ways in which we get that message out to people. Um, and I really use this space much more as a, a place for just communication. Um, the art is what I think brings people in, um, but I, I definitely can say today, after four years, um, so many people have enriched my life in ways that money could not have even come in the picture because they become priceless for me because the bonds that have been created and the feeling sometimes when you meet someone that you feel like this person must somehow be related to me but clearly it has to be on a spiritual level because I you know I know they're not a part of my immediate family so it has to be something spiritual going on that's showing a recognition between us and and you know it, it is amazing again when you don't just one of the things that I think I always think about is that I never feel like I have clients. I always feel like when someone comes in and they generally leave, I feel like I've met a friend that I didn't realize um, I actually knew. Mm -hmm. right. You know, um, I know personally because you and I are very, very good friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know um, that to be so because the bond that you and I have and the connection you know, that you and I have, I can always count on you to tell me the truth. It may not be the truth that I want to hear, right. but right. it's the truth nevertheless. And I love it when I tell you something and you say, I, I, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, well, you know what, sometimes just let me be wrong, okay? Just let me be wrong for right now. And... Um, you change my way of thinking. Oh, thank you. You know, you, you make me see things in a different light and see the other side, you know, so you help me become a better person. Oh, thank you. Thank you know, you. and um, I know that you see the good in everybody. You see the bad, too, because you're a realist. Right. But you right. see the good in everybody, and you try to enhance that and bring that out and let right. folks see the, see the good in themselves as well. Right, because I think that's very, I mean, I think it's, it, it's very important to see people exactly as they are, um, which sometimes I, I question how strange that is being an artist, because art is a large chunk of it, it's about illusion. Um, but I, I guess just having done it so long, I realized for me, um, the direction in which I take my art and then working with other artists is trying to get them to understand that illusion really is in a sense almost the reality of people. Sometimes it's the extreme of that reality, but being able to actually see, as you said, what someone might say, well, that's the bad in a person. But a lot of times the things that are our very weakness, at certain times we have to use them as our strength to get us through certain things. And, and definitely as African Americans, I mean, I think that's something we do very well. We take, you know, the negative of feeling bad and use it to propel us 
into great heights and into great moments. And, and that, again, is something I think is so easy to overlook um, and it's so easy to just not want to understand because I think that's the other thing too. The more you understand, sometimes you realize that within the scope of things, you can't use the same ruler to measure each person. That each person has to be measured individually to understand the degree at which mm -hmm. the information that you know about that person is based. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what I love about you. Thank you. I, Thank I truly do. What I want to do now, if, if we can, I would love to show our viewers the gallery. Oh, wonderful. And I would love for you to to explain some things and explain the works oh, to wonderful. us. Oh, wonderful. So if we oh, I'd love do, to. Okay, that would be a good thing, I think. I love that. Now, that's a wonderful piece. Um, that's a Tha an artist from Thailand. His name is Jakob Mo Rafi. Um, it's called The Slumbering Cowboy. Mm -hmm. um, and he is a traditional master painter and he just brings that lush, romantic feeling to his subjects. And I mean, you really, when you look at that picture, the details, the, mm -hmm. the smokiness of the moment, but the boots mm -hmm. and just the relaxed ten, the relaxed atmosphere of the body, even though he's, he's holding this gun in his mm -hmm. hand, it really kind of evokes that wonderful feeling of what must have made the West um, so exciting. Nicole, Nicole Pritchard. Yes, I mean, Nicole is, uh, she's kind of a, a wunderkin. She works in many different mediums. This is actually um, her taking the wonderful traditional African lost wax technique, but just updating it with a new spin. Her work deals a lot with African-American women, um, and yet you can't really place them in context as far as the period. Uh, she does these. We actually have some really intricate pen and inks on the other side here that she does. This piece here, for instance, is actually by her. It's called The Tree People. Um, and her work really has a wonderful, almost botanical sense in that you really see how people are very closely linked to nature. How do you decide what goes where? I know that you painstakingly before a show, a week before the show, no one can see anything. Mm -hmm. Well, it really, again, as an artist, for me, everything is about instinct and everything. Uh, the gallery closes one week before the new show opens and I really just lay all the pieces down and as strange as it, it seems, um, you talk with the pieces and the pieces actually will speak back and they will actually tell you where I need to go in the scheme of things so that I still can hold my own. So that you realize, um, I think especially when you see a gallery where everything is hung, the traditional salon style, is you realize it's not the category that you actually um, are buying. What you should be looking for is just great pieces that actually are speaking, that actually have something to say. And I think when you do that, what happens is people normally sometimes come and say, oh, I only like abstract or I only like, and that's because most galleries only feature one particular uh, genre or style of painting. And what we say is, is if it's art, it doesn't matter what the style or the genre is because the power that it, this is a gift, this is a message being delivered, that has nothing to do with the labels that we might place on it. I know that's a Shaniqua Gay. Yes, Shaniqua Gay, um, again, another great American painter. She's actually here in Atlanta. Um, her work has just such a unique vision to it. And, and it's, I think you said it best. When you see it, you immediately recognize it. Mm -hmm. And she really captures everything that is amazing, everything that is magical about the Southern experience. She's a, she was born here in Georgia. Um, and the works really magnify contemporary Southern living. My name is Shaniqua Gay. I'm uh, originally from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm the creative specialist this evening at East Space Gallery. Um, this medium here is oil and acrylic. Uh, I work in oils, acrylics. Uh, I mostly paint on wood, very rarely paint on canvas. Um, my inspiration is just the style. I love Southern women. I have a lot of strong Southern women in my family, and basically my paintings are about those women and their relationships, which includes me and the things that inspire me. Um, just homegrown Southern hospitality, um, tea parties, butterscotch, uh, playing a red clay, just all that good stuff about being Southern and being from the South, especially um, being a Georgian. I actually discovered color. <laughs> I'm uh, originally a realist, so I mostly worked in pencil and charcoal. 
And so just haphazardly, I just decided to paint. And once I discovered paint and the use of colors, it was just awesome for me. I didn't, I didn't want to put it down. And so um, the vibrance of color is just a part of me now, and I love it. it. It makes me happy, it gives me joy, and I think it does the same for the buyers and the people who are um, interacting with the work. Oh my gosh, it just represents peace, you know? Just, um, it just represented solitude to me. And I think we all look for a place of peace or a place of solitude. And initially, my peace is somewhere on the Ivory Coast, the Coupe de Bois. <laughs> and um, that's, just, that's just me over in the Ivory Coast, just chilling. Um, that, that just represents peace to me. It represents solitude. And I, I love it. I just love it. I, I have a son, but my, my heart's joy is to have two girls. <laughs> and so um, that's just basically um, a woman and two little girls, but that's where my heart's joy is. I love just the inspiration of women and women raising women. I feel like um, it's very key that we raise um, prominent women in America, which I feel like we do. We do, especially where African American women are concerned. I think we have a lot of strong black women here. That, that is classic Southern church. Uh, ladies with red hat committee. <laughs> uh, wherever your grandmother, your auntie, and your great grandmothers go to church, that's probably where they are, right? <laughs> it's just uh, old southern homegrown women. You can definitely um, reach me at Youth Space Gallery, which is where we are, youthspacegallery.com, and or you can email me, Shaniqua Gay Art at AOL.com and also my MySpace page, which is myspace.com backslash Shaniqua Gay Art. This is what really um, caught my eye when I first walked in. So who's this artist and what is this about? Well, the artist is um, Stephen A. Weber, um, and he really is um, a great American painter. Um, he's originally from New York and he lives here now in Georgia, but um, the amazing thing about his work is he really captures um, the African American experience and he captures not so much um, artificial moments but the realities of scenes um, especially like this piece here which is which is actually his homage to the famous Lafayette Theater um, and there's the the famous stub there from the tree that um, the Apollo adopted later, but originally the um, Lafayette, which was one of the biggest African-American theaters in its day. Um, but what's neat with pieces like this, where the reality comes in, and the woman here is really um, quite lovely because instead of just making it a pretty picture, he really brings um, the excitement, the joy, um, the emotion, but then even like here, when you look, you see that part of her garter is showing, mm -hmm. which is exactly what you would see. It's those little details that sometimes in our memory makes really, really um, vivid perceptions that just kind of ground us and, and just help us become who we are. Yeah. This yeah. 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 painting yeah. Yeah. is a uh, block yeah. party. Yeah. 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 What this really represents, like you feel this in the background, uh, represent projects. I grew up in uh, housing projects in New York City, and um, they were always this color, like this uh, burnt sienna type color. And all these people here were just, uh, you know, people having a good time partying, including the ice cream man. We used to have good humor. He used to come around ringing his bells and everything, and you hear kids calling for their mother. And then, unfortunately, his uh, lady here, you look at her face, you can see a little, I guess you'd say, a little despair. Yeah. It's like pretty much represents how it was. These three panels go together. And this just represents like uh, what's going on like on, 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 the, on the block. Oh, that's the name of the one who You see my man sitting up there, like uh, one step. Now there, there are some other paintings that have more to, more of a story to them. Now. Okay, well take you know. us. Let's okay. start over here. All right, let's go. Let's start over here. This, this painting here, uh, this represents like where I grew up. Like this is. I grew up actually in this building, 
and it was in the Ravenswood housing problem. What this represents is like different errors. Like most of these people in this painting like, are either were or represented by people that I grew up with. Like for example, this this is my older sister. Um, during that time, during that era, he was the guy of he's coming around like when I was locked with the guitar. And he used to play Beatles songs and things like that, you know. He was a little boy, like, uh, so I'm hesitating to mention names, but, you know, this little boy, like, he was, like, real young. And he used to fly through projects on his bike, you know, like, kind of a daredevil on the project. We'd go to the, the public swimming pool. He'd jump off the 10 foot, you know, diving board. And that's what he was kind of known as. Hey. This is Terrence Jackson coming to you from U Space Gallery, um, the premier gallery in Atlanta that always features amazing artwork which is accessible to the masses. Man, do you know an omission is just as bad as a lie? The fact that you know, you know, and you're trying to conceal? Be happy for me! Yeah. Man, just let it go, man. Just let it go. We can discuss this later. Now is not the time to be discussing it. Let it go, man. Let it go. I love her, man. I understand that you love her. How am I supposed to let it go? Man, you just asked me to be your best man. I'm your best friend. What kind of friend would I be if I didn't tell you that you're making a mistake? Look, I, I love her. Okay? She loves me. She could. She's not so sure. Definitely white and material. You know what you have to do. Alright, man. Damn. Now, can we finish this game? I don't feel like you're being sincere. I don't, I don't, I don't believe you, man. Gee, look. I said I'll tell you, okay? Can we please finish the game? Board is on. Board is on. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about that way. Nah, man, you ain't gonna have to do that for 15 years. Oh, no. How many balls have you got? Two to five? You got that, you got that. Be right there! About what we talked about, and uh, I think it'd be a great idea for us to go ahead and do that. Maybe we need to talk. I have to say it's you. You change it. You change our lives. Okay. Baby, now's a good time to have a heart to heart talk. Because there's something I need to discuss with you. No. Ladies first. You know Adam was before. Oh, you there you go. Cheryl, you started it. Okay. I'll go first. This isn't going to be easy. Here. Take this. And if you still want me to have it after I say what I have to say, maybe I'd be blessed and honored to wear it. Cheryl, look, nothing you can say or could have done will stop the way I feel about you. So here, take this ring. But you were born a woman, right? <laughs> yes, baby, I'm all a woman. No, take this ring, Cheryl. No. It's 
much as I would love to become your wife. I can't wear your ring, baby, to eat in the truth. Jill, look, the only thing I know is I love you. And nothing's going to change that. I love you too, Crystal. <sighs> My stepfather raped me and impregnated me when I was 13. It was a rough deliver. They were twins. One was stillborn. The other was raised as my niece slash daughter. Actually, she was raised as my niece in California. I never got to know. She's almost 16 now, and I want to tell her. It's about time. Baby, does she know you at all? I just don't know. We've seen each other at family reunions and we just gravitate towards each other. So many times I almost just told her. Come here, baby. <laughs> baby, that's, that's not all. What is it? The whole ugly situation. It was just too much. It was too much for my body to handle. Cozy, I'm sterile. I can never have your baby. Look, this is not your baby. Look, this is not your fault. You were victimized. I wish I could put my hands on this sorry ass. Baby, we'll work it out, okay? Maybe not. Wasn't Terrence Jackson wonderful and you Space Gallery beautiful? In the interviews with Shaniqua Gay, little bitty Shaniqua Gay, do you sometimes wonder how God could give so much to one little bitty girl and then make me big, black, and awkward? And then we have Saul. That's Stephen A. Weber. He is incredible. And he's so humble. And then our beautiful, our very own omissions by Tracy Cruz. You got so much in just 30 minutes. You guys ought to be paying for this. But we appreciate that you take the time out your day to watch us. Thank you. Stay tuned for more Women on the Hustle.